Hey guys, how's it going? This is Chris Bradley with Produce Like a Boss, and today we're going to go over Splice. Uh, you guys, this is a platform that is incredible. There's lots of great samples on here, and it does a lot. So I'm going to, let's just call this an intro to Splice for today. Um, we're going to get started with the basic functionality. I'm going to show you how to use the samples and the loops and the one shots and to just simply pull them into your DAW. Really easy peasy stuff. Full disclaimer, using loops is a really great way to get a song started. It gives you a groove, it gives you something to, you know, to write to, and that can be really cool. But you never want to, in the end project, in the end result of your project, you do not want to be using a loop that you did not repurpose or make different in some kind of way, especially melodic loops, you guys, okay? So repurposing a sample can be anything from chopping or reversing or simply changing the tempo or the key of. And and there's so much more that you can do um, just by adding your own effects and sounds to them. Um, for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to be kind of pulling in stuff and using those loops and pretend like we're just using it as a song starter. But just keep in mind that um, this is great to get a song started. You don't want your final product to have, you know, especially melodic loops in it because then you're just going to sound like any other person that could have got the same loop. So what really makes you stand out as a producer and gives you your sound and gives you your originality is what you do with these sounds after you get them into the DAW. But for now, I'm just trying to show you how the whole website works and how to actually get the sounds in. And then maybe we'll do another video on that in the future. In fact, if that's something you're interested in and in learning how to repurpose samples and how to take it that next step, drop a comment below and let me know. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to actually sign up for Splice. I think it's like $7.99 a month. There's different plans, but I believe for $7.99 a month, you'll get a hundred samples, which is incredible. And as you can see up here in the right hand corner, I mean, mine's accumulated because sometimes I don't buy samples for a while and then they, they roll over into each month. So for a while there, I wasn't buying any samples. I was just using stuff I had. And I looked over and I was like, oh man, I got like 1500 credits. And then I spent a few. So um, go ahead and get signed up for Splice. You're going to want to download the player. So you can actually just type in like download Splice player. And I think that'll bring you to, there you go right there. It's a desktop app. And uh, right now it's downloading. I actually already have it, but I just wanted to show you how to do that. And then when you download the player, um, it looks like this. And I'm going to expand it by hitting that little arrow. And this is where all the sounds that you purchase are actually going to be stored. So when you get to the site, it's going to look like this. Um, I'm going to encourage you to just start with the sounds, right? Because it can be a little overwhelming. There's a lot going on. I remember when I first got to the site, I was like overwhelmed. I was like, I don't know where to start. So just go to sounds. And uh, once you go to sounds, you can organize your search by either you can go to instruments. Okay, I'm looking for drums, I'm looking for hats, vocals, effects, you know. You can go to genres, which is one of my personal favorites. If I know that I'm doing like a hip hop song or a trap song, I'll just go right to that genre and start looking in there. Okay, I'm in hip hop. I want to look for drums. Um, you know, I want them to be up to, let's say, 100 BPM. It's already going to narrow down my search by uh, just limiting my filtering, right? And I could also say, oh, I only want to look at loops or I only want to look at one shots, right? Because you can get uh, individual shots here or you can get loops here. Another thing you can do is you can start even if you're not ready to purchase. Now, the way you would purchase it is just by clicking right here. Use one credit. Boom. Once I do that, it's just going to pop up here in my player. And the player is a desktop app, and that's going to make it really easy to just pull into my session later. So don't worry about dragging this from the website into your DAW. Just worry about stocking up your player over here by purchasing. I'm not even listening. I'm just buying. Let's see. I think I've bought a few of these, um, and I'll buy this one too because I want you to see it pop up here. See how it's popping up in my recently added? Perfect. So you can also start collections over here even if you haven't purchased. So if I say like hip hop new. I've just created a new folder, right? So let's go back to, uh, let's go back here and let's say that there is a sound that I have not even purchased yet, but I think it's going to go, I think I might want to purchase it. I want to save it in a folder just to stay organized. I'm just going to drag that over to hip hop new and I can do that with any sample hip hop new that I want. And then all I got to do is go over to hip hop new and those samples are there and they're ready for me to, I can, I can like them. Um, and that will also save and I can look at the stuff that I've liked and then I can go ahead and purchase it with that one credit whenever I'm ready to do that. 
So not only can you buy one shots and loops, you can actually buy entire packs. If you really like a few of the sounds going on in the pack, you can just buy the whole thing. Um, so like, let's go to this one right here. Uh, I've got a few things from here already, but let's have a listen. <laughs> Cool. So there's a lot of cool vibey stuff in there. I might just decide I'm going to buy this entire pack. Now, I personally like to go and just get a few things that I like from each individual pack and not try to buy too many packs unless I'm really crazy about the creator. Because then what ends up happening is you might get a little stuck in one area and sound a little bit too much like the artist or producer that created that pack. So you just want to make sure if you are buying a pack to build your songs, not using all the same sounds from that pack because you're going to end up sounding like the person who created it. So um, if you wanted to get, get a pack though, you can just go ahead here, click here, get a pack, and it's going to say, okay, this is 261 credits obviously that's a lot more than just spending a credit on the individual sounds and then just getting the stuff that you know you want so totally up to you you can get one shots you can get loops you can buy it individually or you can buy it as a pack okay so that's pretty much how it goes you know you sign up for the site you download the player you go and you select the the sounds that you like you can heart them to save them if you're not quite ready to purchase or you can just go ahead and click download and they will pop up in your player so once they're in your player and let's say, you know, I've got this session open right here, and then I got my player right here. You can actually, and what's going to happen at first is your player will probably look like this. So you're going to want to expand it, and then you'll be able to see that you can actually filter your search within your player as well. And those collections also pop up over here. So those folders that you created are going to uh, a pop up over here on the left-hand side as well. So let's go to instruments, and I'm going to go to drums. And I can see that over here, I can filter by loops, one shots, um, the tempo, uh, the key, tags, genres. It's pretty cool. So if I know that I'm going to make like a trap song and that it's going to be around like, you know, let's say anywhere between 75 and 97 BPM, I can update my sounds. So now I'm only going to see things that fall into that. I'm going to look at loops only, and I'm going to look at hip hop only and trap only. So now I've narrowed down my search and it's like, okay, great. I don't have to go thumbing through a bunch of sounds to, found, uh, to find what I'm looking for. So um, right now, let's just get a few things going. Like I said, I'm not really going to go too much into repurposing, uh, but I do want to keep reiterating that, you know, pulling in a bunch of loops and stacking them on top of each other doesn't make you a producer. It's what you do with those sounds once they're in the DAW that really determine your, your sound and your originality. But, you know, what if you're just a singer songwriter and you're just wanting something to write to, or even as a producer, you might pull in the sounds just like this in, in loop form, get your artist to write to them or you write to them, and then the vocals inspire you to take that production in, in a new direction. There's nothing wrong with, with using loops. It's just, you know, it shouldn't be the last stop for you. It shouldn't be like the final step in the process. That's all. So let's see, uh, let's have a listen. And before we do that, let's make sure I am not blasting you by checking the volume here. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do just for my brain to make this uh, organized. First thing I want to do is I want to start with a topper um, or that's, you know, a topper means that it's like percussive, you know, it's usually higher end stuff like hats and percussions. So I'm going to start with just pulling in something of that nature to get this going. That's pretty cool. Let's pull that in. So you can see uh, right here that this is 80 BPM, right? And I've got my session set at 93. Well, let's... Uh, Let's split the difference. You know, I could just set this to 80 and it'll match the loop. Sure. Now, by the way, guys, this is not like pulling in a loop from your Logic stock sounds. Those are always going to change because they are within the DAW. So they're going to change based on what you set your BPM at. But, you know, as you can see, because this was at 93, um, this was not on the grid when I pulled it in because it's 80 BPM. So if I change this to 80, now it's all on the grid. Well, let's split the difference. Let's go, let's say we want it to be 90 BPM. I can tell by looking at this that I'm going to need to, and I'm doing this by pushing option and click. And by doing that, I am adjusting the tempo, right? So let's go ahead and turn on the click, make sure I'm right. Okay, cool. So we'll just call that hat topper. Let's go in here and find something else. I'll take the hats off my search here and just go for groove. Great. And this is 92 BPM. So I'm at 90. So you see how it's just shy of that little mark right there? I'm just going to grab it, 
with option click and drag it and that is going to make it fit to 90 BPM. Let's have a listen. So this is our main like meat and potato beat and holding down the fort <laughs> and this is going to be our percussive kind of topper. Great. I'm going to repeat that so we get a nice little eight bar loop going. Awesome. So now we got like a nice little groove going. We've got a, uh, a topper going. So it's kind of like our kick snare and then a little bit of a percussion on the top. So next, let's move on to something. Uh, let's move on to something melodic. Uh, we were just in drums. I'm now in keys and I'm going to select my BPM to go from like the range that I want to look from 90 to 100 and then update. And that's going to filter out stuff that's already kind of living in that range. So uh, let's have a listen. <laughs> I like it. That's 97. I'm going to go ahead and pull that in. Uh, my BPM is 90. You can see right where it falls shy. Usually I eyeball this in two and four bar increments. Um, you'll get used to it. Um, if you're just looking at the grid, you might have to go in. I'll show you another way to do this. This is 97. You can actually go into functions. I'm sorry, you need to be under file. You can go into functions and go into the time and pitch machine and you could change this from 97 to 90 just like that. So let's have a listen to this melodic loop on the top of all this. Yeah, cool. So I'm just going to loop that through and it's already starting to feel, we'll call that a piano melody. It's already starting to feel like a song now, right? And this could be great to get a groove going and something to write to. Uh, so let's have a listen. Awesome. So now we've pulled in three elements from Splice and haven't really done anything to change them. We're just pulling them in as a foundation to get us started. There's so much more that you can do with this. I just kind of wanted to show you the functionality of how to pull it into your DAW and how to adjust your tempo. So now that we've got this like foundation set here, we can actually build on top of it by just playing our own thing, right? You don't always have to stick within Splice just because you start in Splice. Now it's time to kind of add our own uh, flare. So let's let's go to an empty channel strip. I'm just going to use a logic stock uh, instrument here to keep it easy. But let's go to like synth and go to synth bass, and then let's go to like ooh punch me. Hmm, what's that? And then we'll just keep that the same the second time around. So I'm actually going to just delete that and then loop that. Make my base dark green because that's how I like it. And then let's have a listen to that. So now that I've added a little bass groove, I actually think I want to add um, kind of like another melodic groove on top of this. I'll just reach for... I'll just reach for another piano right now, just just give you an idea. Let's see. So we'll go like piano, Yamaha, Yamaha, Yamaha. <laughs> and I would just do something pretty simple. Let's see. Great. I'm going to go ahead and not quantize that, but just have a look and make sure nothing's too... Yeah, that's pretty good. Fly it over. Make a little space for it. Do, do. Roll off those lows. Awesome. So as you can see, we definitely got really like hip hop with this. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I just wanted to start grabbing uh, files and pulling them in. Personally, I love hip hop, but you can do this with multi-genres. You can do this with EDM. You can do this with trap, 
pop, hip hop, urban. Uh, there is, um, you can do this. There's rock genre in there as well. There's orchestral cinematic jazz. I mean, there's, there's lots of stuff to choose from. This is just what I went with for the purposes of today's tutorial. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe, smash a little thumbs up, hit the bell to be notified when the next video comes out, and do not forget to grab a copy of your producer's tool belt. Okay, this is a free gift that I made for you guys. There's a link in the description. All you got to do is click that to get it. It is literally the tool belt of all the sounds and uh, plugins that I like to use in my productions. Um, and of course, if there's anything that you'd like to learn about, I love sharing this information within my community. So please just drop that in the comments below and tell me what your ego... Uh, eager to learn in the world of music production and I'm here to help you out. Cheers guys, I'll see you next time. Do it like a like a like a boss. Like a boss.